this collective Akashic Records reading is an extension of another video that I did on abundance and why a lot of people are struggling to manifest an abundant life. So make sure to check out that video after this one. I'll link it down below and let's get into your reading for today. If you chose repairing the veil, this is your group, group one. So group one, I tapped into your collective Akashic Records to get guidance on how this energy of lack is manifesting in your life. What is the primary energetic energetic block that is causing you to experience lack in your life? And when did the pattern start? And advice on how you can transmute this energetic block so you can start manifesting an abundant life. So your Akashic library showed up as an abandoned old farmhouse to me at first. And as I got closer to it, it transformed into this restored, abundant, functional, beautiful farmhouse with a rainbow in the background. So this talks to me that there's like a temporary rip in your energetic field that's creating this illusion of disconnection from source, from your higher self. You might feel like blocked from abundance, like the universe is working against you type of feeling. Like you keep bumping into walls, you might feel like what you want will never happen for you. But the fact that this old abandoned farmhouse transformed into this vibrant functional farmhouse that tells me that that's just an illusion and it's a temporary illusion of disconnection from your perspective so once i entered the library and i asked the first question um about uh, how the lack how the energy of lack is showing up in your life your guides showed me um six of pentacles the tarot card so in the traditional tarot card it depicts this person using a scale to weigh resources to distribute resources to two beggars and I heard mercy. I also heard the scale is tainted. And I saw someone casting a spell on the scale to cause it to always tip to one side. So it depends on if you are the giver or the receiver. The scale could be always tilted to your right side or the left side. And of course, this is symbolic, right? So you can think about what's on the left side of the scale and what's on the right side of the scale. And are you the giver or are you the receiver? This is their way of showing how you perceive this experience of lack in your life if you are always the giver you could feel like it's always your responsibility to help people to give people this and that if you are the receiver you could feel like you're always at other people's mercy you know <clears throat> be a company be a relationship or you know the universe it's like you just don't get to choose like either 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 you are the giver or the receiver you have this feeling that you don't get to choose and it's always like this like it's always tilted this way so if you're the giver it's like always you have to like help people to sacrifice whatever fill in the blank you know decide what's on both ends of the scale but that is how the energy of lack is manifesting in your life and your guides said the destiny is not set so if you ever feel like this is just your life forever this is all you get this is all you deserve and think again because right now i'm seeing you like writing new script for your life, creating new timelines for your life, new opportunities. So the destiny is not set, the destiny is being set and reset and rewritten every moment when you make a different decision and take a different action. They continue by saying, in life, you will have to learn to play both roles. So this tells me that if you uh, always been on the end of the giver, start to learn to receive. If you always be on the end of receiving, like depending on other people's mercy to give you resources to help then try to give try to give what you have what you can to share with people you have to balance these two sides and the fact that that someone casting a spell on this scale to cause it to always tip towards one end that person is you and for you to discharm or remove that spell is for you to play both sides right so that's how you can um, start to invite the energy of abundance in your life um, your guides also said don't taint the scale, right? So you are the person messing with the scale unconsciously perhaps. So this could be talking about biases, one-sided views, um, any self-sabotaging thoughts that you might have. And they also showed me you being in a meadow, so it's full of like abundance, right? Bunch of flowers, butterflies and lives. However, it's like you're ignorant to your environment. Instead, your focus is fixated on this mountain in the far distance and the energy I picked up on was like you didn't even know where that mountain is what's in that mountain 
it's sort of like an escape for you. It's an idea that you have to escape whatever you perceive to be lacking in this meadow. And because of that, you're kind of like on autopilot mode, like a zombie possessed, like you don't even see ahead of you where you're heading is like this desert environment. So that's your guy's way of saying, you know, kind of stay in the present moment and notice all the abundance you have around you, share that abundance, receive and enjoy that abundance instead of um, thinking that you have to go somewhere in order to be happy, in order to be abundant. And so I asked, what's the main energetic energetic block in your field that is the root cause of this manifestation of lack in your life? And they showed me like an abyss, like a rip in space-time and they told me desperation and fear of missing out. They also showed me this ocean tainted with an oil spill and there's fear instilled in you. So the main energetic block for you are lack, experience of lack is this sense of desperation. So sense of desperation and fear of missing out can manifest into different actions and decisions in your life, right? So it could be always needing to have something that other people have, always needing to have what you think you desire right here, right now. It could be if the other person is doing that, then I must be doing that too. Otherwise, I'm missing out on something. So that's for you to reflect on and ponder more. I also heard someone like trapped under this murky water, like trying to surface, trying to breathe. So this could be symbolic of a situation that you're in or certain emotions that you are kind of stuck with, this murky water. And they showed me three areas this energy is sort of a most potent in your life. Number one, they show me a, a dollar sign. So this could mean actual financial struggle, or perhaps you are not really struggling financially, but you just want more, or you are always worried about not having enough, worry about tomorrow, worry about missing on this opportunity for investment or whatever. So that, in that sense, you are sort of like trying to create, trying to manifest from this scarcity mindset too. The second life area or aspect of life, I would say, is emotional fulfillment. So it could mean that it doesn't matter how much you've achieved, how much you've accumulated, you just feel like it's not enough. So the lack of emotional fulfillment in life, it could be in different life areas. And third is just this void. They just show me this void. And this void could be um, something you haven't identified yet. I would say it's more, it has more to do with your spiritual development because you haven't identified what's creating the void. So you are trying to like fill that void with a lot of with a lot more desires, thinking that once I have that, kind of like the mountain in the far distance, you think once I have this, once I'm there, I will be satisfied, I will be happy, I will be content, and I'll just be at peace. So identify that void, identify the root cause of that void, and the hints you have from your guides are, you know, how you feel desperate about X Y Z in life your fear of missing out, start examining your decisions and actions you take. Are they based on these two energetic blocks of desperation and fear of missing out? Because if that's the case, then you are just going to continue to manifest more lack in your experience. So I asked about when this pattern started and there's no answer to past life indication. So this could mean that at this point, it doesn't matter. Perhaps you were not even interested in your past lives. Perhaps knowing what happened in your past life does not matter. Rather, focus on the present, your present life. So more specifically, they gave me the age range between 12 to 16. So this pattern of desperation, making decisions because you're desperate for something, or you're afraid of missing out on something, this pattern started between 12 to 16. So what you can do is to think back, reflect upon you know, what was going on during that period of time in your life. It could be a series of events. It could be big or it could be small. But more importantly, they kind of described it, like they're showing me like parents kind of have the same scarcity mindset, like running around collecting like scattered resources. Someone moved a lot during that time, feeling blocked, not being appreciated by parents and peers, not fitting in, not belonging, and being treated like they show me like loose parts, you know how we have like loose parts at home 
in our house and we don't want to throw them away because we think they might come in handy one day but then we still don't know what what they can do we just kind of keep them around so that's describing how you felt during that time that you were kept around but for what purpose that you didn't experience love or you know recognition or you didn't see your value it's kind of like yeah we can do with or without you type of feeling but your guides did say that it is a generational pattern this desperation and fear of missing out and it traces all the way back to three to four generations and it's more prominent on your father's side so you can think about your father and your father's you know family like how they exhibit the energy of desperation and fear of missing out and their own experiences in manifesting lack in their life and finally when i asked for the advice in your akashic records your guides said scattered resources everywhere ones that you can see ones that you can perceive among all things available to the universe one's gotta be you so take time to reflect on the message because i can already see a hundred ways to interpret this message for example the scattered resources could be indicating resources you have around you it could be saying you are the scattered resources when you are scattered you might mean nothing you don't see your value but when you piece together all the pieces, you can build something magical. You can build machines, you can build whatever your heart desires. And if you doubt the value of your existence, then this is confirmation for you that you exist because you has you have something to do, you have something to contribute to the universe, right? So do not doubt the value of your existence. That's just my interpretation. They asked you not to dwell on the past. They said the challenge of abundance has been a struggle perhaps for generations now if you can observe it it manifested in mental health physical strength and emotional abuse please consider leading a life with an untainted heart for that's how you shine in the darkest storm at night so perhaps you never feel at peace in your life and people around you are just really trapped into this like 3d mindset of abundance you know working very hard and um being being very scarce about resources that's all i'm saying but you are kind of like this lantern like once you turn inwards and follow your truth follow your heart find your truth in your heart you're gonna light up and you're gonna lead the way by transforming yourself every single step you take will break down this generational pattern of desperation and fear of missing out one by one and you start from working on yourself by transmuting the energy and you also have a golden dragon working with you right now. So if you are not someone who can resonate with dragons, just think of the dragon's energy. This energy, this dragon or this guide is in your life to hold the frequency, the vibrational frequency of focus, peace and tranquility. So what they're suggesting you to do is to do a five to 10 minute meditation each morning before you start your day by imagining, by imagining this golden white light coming down and entering your crown chakra and push the energy all the way down through your body. This energy will exist in your energetic field to help you to stay anchored in the present moment, to be still, to be aware of repeating any pattern. And this energy field will, is there to anchor you in this peace, tranquility, and so you can focus focus on the present moment, focus on what you truly desire and not get, right now I'm seeing you picking up pieces of like, you know, the parts and you are like building something. I think you need to direct your attention, your focus, your energy on things that matter. You are finding out who you are. You are piecing together who you want to be, what you're good at, instead of being told that you're good at nothing or you are only good at this. If you don't want to do the meditation of the visualization meditation, you can also do the OM chanting. The OM frequency is very similar to the golden dragon. Hmm. Okay, so right now, folk direct your attention on figuring out who you are and be aware of your decisions based on the fear of missing out or this sense of desperation. So I also pulled a few cards just to get further um, guidance for you. So first you have number 45, repairing the veil through forgiveness. So this is the rip in your energetic field that we saw in your Akashic records. 
right? This temporary illusion of disconnection between you and the source, because we're never disconnected from source. This is an illusion. This is sort of like a belief almost that we tell ourselves. And that's why you feel like there's this invisible force blocking you from abundance. And you have Seven of Cups and the World card reverse, anchoring that, repairing the veil. So Seven of Cups traditionally, of course, this is the card of fears. In this depiction, it's telling you to don't, don't be small, don't hold yourself small because of perhaps what other people tell you. Follow the, your guiding stars, figure out who you are and be, become stars. To reach for your goals and there is some finished business there perhaps it's you know once you go down this rabbit hole of shadow work and everything you'll have a lot of emotions surface and this is like a world that you haven't explored within yourself an, an entirely new universe that you haven't explored within yourself these two cards are what's behind this this veil i think and it's trying to come through to become part of the world your third dimensional world there so you need to um, to start dreaming, <coughs> and it starts by figuring out who you really are, right? And the second card you have number three, benefactor, grace and generosity. This talks to look how abundant this life is, and this reminds me of the lantern analogy in the vision, like how once you take a step to break down this generational pattern you will bring all sorts of abundance for yourself and for your family too and it's anchored by wheel of fortune and look at this card all the parts she's put together by all the parts to achieve something good so another way to look at this card is collect all the parts the parts are symbolic the parts could mean things that other people tell you that you cannot be you cannot do you shouldn't do you shouldn't do that you shouldn't be that collect all of those find the truth and Create something of your own using those parts. This is who you are becoming. You're building a sense of um, identity that's separate from your tribe. And that's how you turn the fortune around. Right, right now it's reverse. That's how you turn things around by building, using all the parts that's scattered. And that's how you become this abundant version of you. This is the abundance in life that you're experiencing. And the third one, you have 28, hollow bone, teachability. So this tells me that this is greater than just like a one-time transformation. This is something that you are going to embody as part of your identity, that you will be able to teach other people even. And the way I look at these cards, because you have number nine, number three, and then number 10. Number nine is like almost to completion, right? So right now it's like recognizing there's this rip in your energetic field. You have to take some actions three embracing the abundance to learn how to receive and learn how to give and that's how you complete a cycle number 10 and to become like this teacher like um to help people on a similar path perhaps of course you don't have to be like a form formal teacher teacher there are different ways to teach you have two tarot cards anchoring the hollow bone oracle cards one is five of pentacles reverse um knight of cups reverse so all reversals because we're talking about the experience of lack right so it makes sense so this five of pentacles is really interesting five of pentacles talk about hardships talks about value in your heart so you can look at this as this rose is sort of like consciousness this is the authentic you the 3d version of you is birthed from this your consciousness this truth right now they're caged you guys are caged and this cage became part of you became part of your identity so whatever people told you that you are and you are not think again it's time for you to transmute this energy and to become bigger, bigger than your environment, bigger than your stories, bigger than um, people who say, who, people who, who, th who think you should be, right? So King of Cups traditionally talks about this expansive emotions um, and healthy boundaries and everything. But in this context, this talks to me that you are so much bigger than everything that you think is defining you and blocking you. And sort of like this Seven of Cups card. You have all the stars within you. You are the universe. And didn't we see an ocean? Yeah, we saw an ocean in the channeled vision in your Akashic records. And the ocean is tainted with an oil spill, right? So you have so much abundance in this ocean. <coughs> but then right now you have to deal with the oil spill. The oil spill could be someone's 
some toxic relationships, some to toxic patterns that's up for you to decide that you have to clean up that oil spill in order to experience that kind of abund expansive abundance just within you. It's not outside of you, it's not like in, you know, in a distance, on a mountain somewhere, it's right within you. And that's what the cards are talking about. Lastly, you have just some encouragement from your guides, from the Akashic Records. Again, you have number 46, that's number 10. It says, facing your fears. How beautiful is that? Do not be afraid to collect those scattered parts and build something innovative. Build something that other people might call you a freak, a Frankenstein creation. That doesn't matter. Look for ways to strengthen your connection to the universe. So right in the beginning, we said this connection is an illusion. This, this, this connection is an illusion. Look for ways to strengthen your connection to the universe and others. So it just talks to me about playing both roles like your guides from the Akashic Records recommend. You have to be the giver and receiver. Stay peaceful and calm in the knowing of who you are. I'm not going to explain too much. I think it's very straightforward. So I hope this channel message from your Akashic Records helps you gain some clarity on how you can address the experience of lack and manifest in an abundant life. Make sure to check out the full channel message on abundance in another video. I'll link it down below. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and liking this video. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. If you chose this Manny Masks Oracle card, this is your reading, group two. So group two, um, when I tapped into your Akashic Records, your Akashic Records library kind of dropped in in this form of like a big mountain with a cave in it. So there's a metal door. After I opened the metal door, I saw two paths within this mountain. It's sort of like a hallway to your Akashic library. One path was lit by just fires. It felt pretty safe, you know, like safe choice. The other path was kind of like glowing in this, this mysterious light. So of course I chose the mysterious way, the mysterious path. And then after I went through the path, I saw that's where I met your guides in your Akashic records. So this tells me that perhaps you are at a fourth path right now and you have this urge to embark on this unknown adventure but at the same time you, there's i'm feeling this like string like tying me to the safe path the familiar path so however the energy of lack is showing up in your life i think it has to do with some fear or beliefs that you are not ready to let go of and that's kind of preventing you from embarking on this path. So if that's the case, we'll gain some clarity for you on that. But overall, I think it's a good sign that your guides are already waiting for you on this path. I chose that mysterious path for a reason. It's your energy guiding me to choose that path. And the fact that your guides are already waiting for you there, that's a very good sign. So the first question I asked your guides in your Akashic Records was how is this energy of lack manifesting in your day-to-day -day life and they show me you riding on an elephant and you're like so tiny you're like a dot on this gigantic elephant and this elephant is sort of like losing control not panicking or anything just like freely <coughs> roaming around but it's trampling on people and you're like trying to control but there's this sense of this animal is too big for me to control to maneuver to manage so of course the elephant is symbolic of something in your life it could be a goal you're trying to achieve, a vision that you have, just life itself, some relationship perhaps, future, the future. Something feels too big for you to maneuver, for you to manage. And um, they also show me kind of four categories of kind of the energy that's manifesting in your life. Number one is heaviness. So it could feel like, you know, some burden, responsibility, this just heaviness think when you feel when you're thinking about the unknown tenderness is the second one so this tenderness is like you're wanting something so badly that your heart hurts that's the tenderness that i've got people pleasing perhaps you are not embarking on this new path just yet because you are still pleasing people on this old familiar path and they show me a crown so to me a crown symbolizes competition, reputation, status, and social hierarchy. So those could be what's holding you right here, right now, not choosing one path just yet. Um, afraid of competition or you have certain reputation to maintain, status to maintain, you don't want to start from the beginning again. And there's this feeling of you can barely manage things 
in your vicinity. You can barely take care of yourself, let alone taking care of others. You can barely manage the current resources you have, let alone exploring this unknown territory. So that's the energy that I got and how the energy of black is manifesting in your life. So I asked them to, um, to show me like the main energetic block that is the root cause of this energy of black that's showing, that keeps showing up in your life. And they said it's trust. And they said trying to control everything. You're trying to control everything because you don't trust in yourself. You don't trust in how life works. You don't trust in just the ebbs and flows in life. And when I asked them, when did this pattern start? Because usually they'll indicate you know, from past life, current life, what's the age range. <clears throat> they just kept saying now, now, now. So this tells me that it doesn't matter, you know, what happened in the past, whatever. You have to just live in the present moment and notice what is going on at this moment, at this current moment. And the way they explain this, especially me, you standing on the train track with a fast approaching train. So again, this is symbolic. This fast approaching train could be a situation, could be an emotion, could be a relationship, could be an event, could be life itself. That is approaching you so quickly that you don't have time to strategize, to you know, think about where to go. All you can do is just to dodge under. So the train is sort of like passing through above you when you're under the train, between the train track and the train. And the way for you to get out of this situation they showed me was by flying into the sky. So you sort of like took the train with your hands and you flew into the sky. This tells me about just enough is enough determination and willpower and a sense of trust, of course, because trust that you are not doomed, they said. And they asked me to share um, the quotes from the other channel message channel video that I did about abundance with you. So in the other channel, the message about abundance, the Dragon Guides in the Akashic Records said, when you trust, trust in yourself, in your value, in your worth, in your future, then you are what you are trying to become despite the circumstances. You will invite the energy of trust to flow effortlessly in your being. And that's how you tap into the unlimited source of energy for abundance. What is trust versus wishful thinking? When you can be honest and vulnerable with yourself and know that you are living every moment of your life, making choices and taking actions that align with your truth. It is trust in its most authentic form. It is the physical you taking full responsibility for exercising your free will and loving yourself completely that you know in your soul that you are one with the source. So listen to that channeled message again. I think it's very straightforward and there's so much depth in them that will apply differently to each and every one of you. And um, you also have the same golden dragon that showed up in group one. So this golden dragon, if you're not someone who resonates with the dragon energy, you can think of this guide holding the vibrational frequency of focus in your life right now. Because focus is the energy that will help you stay anchored in the now, right? The vision of you trying to get out of this situation where this fast train is approaching you and you're kind of stuck on the train track. Do that every morning, the meditation in the morning to help you um, channel the energy of focus, the stillness and awareness, or you can also do the own meditation every morning to help you stay anchored uh, before you start your day. So um, in addition to the channel messages and visions in your Akashic records, I also pulled a few cards just to get more um, clarity and guidance from your guides. So first you have the number 38, Many Masks, the Authentic Self. We said something about authentic self in a channel message. I forgot, but I'm pretty sure it says something about trust in its most authentic form, right? So this is talking about finding your truth and anchoring that card you have five of wands. Reverse. So this, I just heard, don't be other people's chess pieces. So right now, on this path remember the two paths in your akashic records the original the familiar path you could be one of the pawns for other people to piece together their puzzles it's time for you to piece together your own puzzles and stop being one of the pawns it's time for you to strategize for yourself it's time for you to um, look become the elephant to yourself like in the vision and stop being just a chess piece to other people's dreams to other people's visions 
it doesn't mean that you have to you know like do everything on your own no but use your discernment to see like where what are you actually contributing what is your true value and does that match with your authentic self second card you have number 22 fools embrace transmuting pain so this represents the fool's energy in a tarot card on this path of this new embarking on this new path you're gonna confront some of your shadows you're gonna experience some setbacks um, perhaps that there are a lot of unrecognized unprocessed traumas emotions and baggage and limiting beliefs that you need to confront on this path this new path and it's anchored by king of wands so king of wands you can think about this passion with commitment passion with commitment is important passion with commitment meaning you become passion you become your passion it's not just something that you enjoy doing you um, do to you know kind of relax but it's with some commitment and this commitment represents your authentic realization of your authentic self and what you want to become what you want to manifest what you are here to do on earth in this lifetime and that passion is part of your identity. That's what this talks about to me. And the third one, you have spirit of the river, movement towards adventure. And this light looks exactly like the glowing light that I saw on this new path that your guides are guiding you to embark on. So it's time for you to choose the new adventure in not a familiar way, right? So you, how do you turn this energy to upright is by strategizing and is by thinking about all the resources, all the parts that you can play for yourself and all the resources that you can tap into in your life on this new path. And it's anchored by seven of pentacles, reverse, again reverse, because we're talking about the energy of black, so it's normal to have a lot of reversals. Seven of pentacles talk about this hard labor. So a couple messages for me um, in this card. One, it's time for you to enjoy the fruit of your labor. So perhaps it's time to really take inventory of how far you've come, how far you've achieved. That is going to give you some sense of confidence for you to embark on the, the unknown path. This depiction more specifically also talks to me about it doesn't matter like how big the prize seems, you only have half of it because it's not yours. Like this apple, you only have half of the apple because you are sharing it with other palms, with other chess pieces. And even though if you have like material security, material abundance at this moment, you're wondering like something is just missing. Something is missing. That like you're surrounded by all the abundance, but where's the emotional fulfillment? You know if there's something bigger, you know you're kinda of done here, you're ready for the next stage. So somehow I don't think for you this is I don't think this has to do with material lack. It's the, the sense of abundance that you're trying to manifest is more like your life mission, stepping into your authentic self to f really do something that is beyond the mundane day to day. So the last card you have is just encouragement from the spirit. You have in the light of the moon, and it says a full moon can shine light on what you have been resisting. This can be anything from your fears to your soul's beauty. So what are you not recognizing within yourself? Like this path, this new path, that is that is already in existent in your Akashic records. Otherwise, we wouldn't be seeing it today. So that path is already there because you already manifested that desire. You just haven't taken action to solidify that path yet. And it's going to... In the start, it's going to feel like you are navigating in the moonlight. You don't have great visibility and everything. But a good thing about the moonlight is it shows you your deepest fears, your deepest hopes. It unravels secrets. It shows you all the hidden emotions that you've put away. So that's why it's encouraging you to transmute pain because you're gonna bound to go through some emotional ups and downs. But 
when you need courage, listen back to the channel message from the Dragon Pirates about trusting in yourself and the difference between trust versus wishful thinking. I think you'll find it very helpful. So I hope this channel message from your Akashic Records helps you gain some clarity on how you can manifest an abundant life for yourself. Make sure to check out the full channel message on abundance in another video. I'll link it down below. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and liking this video for more content like this. Other than that, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hello, group three. This is your Akashic Records reading. Um, so when I tapped into your Akashic Records library, your library showed up as like bubbles, a lot of yellow and pink bubbles. And it reminds me of like the good witch from the Wizard of Oz, you know, how she always cast like bubbles in difficult situations that's her magic so intuitively i think this tells me um about your view on the world like you are a very positive person you would rather choose to believe the good in people you would rather to um expect the best outcome rather than worrying about what could have gone wrong or what could go wrong that kind of personality so usually like how the library shows up kind of tells me small things like that so the first question I asked you guys from your Akashic Records was how is this energy of lack manifesting in your life? And they, their answer was pretty interesting because the way they showed me was kind of like everything seems elusive. Perhaps that's your take on the world to recognize that everything is transient, right? Everything changes, things come and go. So everything is elusive, temporary. They show me that things just kind of disappear and then reappear at a different place. So this tells me that you have a really good grasp of like spiritual understanding of, you know, um, the different facets of your being, different dimensions, different timelines, how energies work, how life flows and everything. So I heard bubbles don't burst, they just disappear and reappear at different places. Again, it's like an illusion. And this tells me that you, because of your abundance mindset, you don't necessarily experience a lack lack in a traditional sense, um, but it's more like you manifest by accident because you understand so well that nothing is permanent. Nothing stays in one place permanently. Everything is transient. So you're generally very positive, right? So, but, so you don't have this, like, uh, how should I explain? You don't have this fixation on how your manifestation should turn out and and right now i'm seeing that some of you are like it has to do with a career or work too like you might not be like a, an aggressive person because you believe in like the natural flow of life and i've seen like teachers some kids either you teach kids or it could be like you're a mom you know family environment and I'm seeing someone doing math. So perhaps you're in school or you are a teacher who teach all of that. Um, so it seems like it, you don't really experience like difficulty in manifesting your desires because you don't have the same kind of attachment to the outcome as other people do, but it's still, um, it's still like, there's still like a level of lack there because when you are completely in tune with the source, when you're one with the source, when we, you are the creator, manifestation won't feel like an accident. Like you can become more confident in your skill to manifest. Right now, perhaps there's this subtle energy that since you cannot control things, you are afraid to dream of a specific outcome, perhaps. So the main energetic block for the root cause, the energetic root cause for this sense of lack in terms of you know manifesting by accident is ungroundedness for you and it got this like very pisces energy like in the headspace you're a dreamer a visionary um and even when i'm tapping into your records i just feel like spacey like i often forget what i'm doing where i'm going and just things just kind of a lot of random things pop up and i'm like everywhere a little bit hard to ground myself um just in your headspace a lot so I asked your guys in the Akashic Records, like, when did this energetic pattern of like being ungrounded start? Um, you know, it could be just your personality, but you know, what about like your third dimensional experience? And they said started three generations ago, and they show me grandmother, and it, she's kind of got this like, witchy vibe. So perhaps like in your family, like you you guys have been like you know, very spiritual people, like meditation. 
like um, doing all kinds of like, different modalities and you guys are not strangers to the spiritual practices. And so it kind of traces back to, you know, three generations, like you, your mother and your grandmother, maybe that's why they show me a grandmother. And um, for your present life, when you start to kind of develop this pattern of really dreamy and manifesting by accident is when you are very young, like I saw f between three to four years old. And they say, they said the way you started that pattern was by playing with your imagination. So when you're three, four years old, I believe you're still a toddler, right? So just, you might have imaginary friends, you might be seeing like spirit guides that other people don't see and you are, you were very good at creating this like imaginary world for you to kind of disappear in and that's how you become um, ungrounded um, in this third world, in this 3D reality. And when I ask for guidance for how you can, you know, like ground yourself, I'm not saying that this is bad, but just know everything is about balance and you have an earth dragon working with you. <laughs> and the earth dragon just said animals. So observe how they say, observe how animals live in the present moment. And some of you might have rabbits, but pets, because they specifically show rabbits. So perhaps you interact with animals on a daily basis, animals around you just by interacting with them, and you can take a step further to observe how earthy they are. Even though they understand the illusions of the reality, they, they are more in tune with the ebbs and flows of life, but at the same time, how they enjoy this physical experience every moment. And I also heard too many directions. So perhaps a lot of <coughs> are trying to do a lot of things, you know, a lot of things that you want to do, you feel called to do, um, but they are like too many directions at once. And then they show me some tree roots, especially it was a banyan tree. So I know banyan tree is sort of like, like some culture believes banyan trees grow upside down in order to bring a kindness, to bring purity into humanity because they have those like um, tendrils, like branches that just look like their roots. So they have deep roots at the same time. They have like roots that are like on the surface. So this tells me that your gift in your, you know, spirituality and your understanding in how life works, how energy works, is here to give, is a gift to the collective, to people that you can help. But you have to find a way to kind of channel that gift in a more grounded way and in a way to be able to really feel solid to yourself in order to um, create the maximum potential that you can create in this lifetime in helping people using your gifts. So the root symbolism is, you know, perhaps, of course it's staying grounded, but perhaps it's about having a space that allows you to feel anchored. It could be your office, it could be a home. Some of you might be trying to find a place you can call home a family even um, but a key really for you they said is to ground your visions through actions and to balance the airy energy so you can if you do like um, if you do spells and everything you can try to channel more earthy energy because right now there's a lot of airy energy and water energy in your field and channeling more like earthy energy will really help you to create that balance and it will help you to really translate what's in here and manifest into this third dimensional world so in return you will feel you know you'll feel the abundance in life and you will be able to use that abundance and then share that abundance with other people to help other people like you are meant to do in this lifetime so I feel like a lot of you might be like healers or you know some sort of like spiritual workers, the light workers. It's different cards to see if there's anything that wants to come through. Oh, you have magician's sword. Number 37, number 10. Confidence in your magic. How beautiful is that? So perhaps you are, if you are trying to do this like spiritual thing, this your business, <coughs> like you have great visions for what you can do with your um, intuition, with your psychic abilities, the mediums, whatever. There's this conviction there that is missing. Perhaps you're just starting, perhaps it's about doubts about how you can do that for a living, right? The crossing 
initiation oh this is a beautiful card and in a way these two cards together is sort of like once you set that intention you have you make that commitment passion with commitment it's kind of like talking to the universe yes use me as a channel that starts this process of initiation of transporting through this portal this passage to become a psychic a medium a healer of whatever you're trying to become or in a way you are being guided you're being invited to make that commitment woodwife's adaptability again number 10 Woodwife's talking about grounding, about tree energy, about being in tune with nature, being in tune with the webs of life, the webs of energy. Like being so in tune with energy, but not in an airy way, not like just Pisces energy, it's like Pisces plus Virgo energy combined. I feel like. This represents your talent, your gift, your mission, and it's an airy, airy energy. But the rest is earthy. Crossing the bridge and the wood wipes are very grounded. So in a way, you're sort of like helping to bridge between the spirit world and the third dimensional world. So you can look at it as the passage, your life path. Using your gift to connect the spirit world for your, with the third dimensional world for yourself and for other people. The people that you will be helping or you're already helping. Um, I'm just gonna get a few tarot cards to see. There's more information. Two of Cups, Reverse, and Nine of Swords. This is destined. What do you want? Your ability, what do you desire to do as your profession um, is your life mission. It's your authentic, authentic gift, your authentic representation of who you are in this physical world. But the Nine of Swords is all the worrying about this anxiety unnecessary worrying that's stopping you from stepping into your full potential this could be <coughs> also be talking about you have the gift like of magic and magic means different things right it doesn't always have to be psychic it could be you are just like extra talented at something music whatever and you, you are not fully embracing it right now because of how you perceive yourself to be not enough experience, not enough certifications, not enough credentials, what makes you qualified, that kind of thinking. So if that's the case, based on the guidance from your Akashic Records, it's just to start taking actions. Like, accept that this mentality might be there for a while, but as you walk on this path, I feel like this is not that big of a blockage for you. That this mental blockage will fade away as you gain more evidence from the efforts that you put in. <clears throat> and anchoring the crossing, the initiation, the initiation, your life path, you have Ace of Pentacles. Right now, it came out reverse, but this tells me this is a new beginning. This is going to bring you a whole new level of abundance, like material, or um, I think for you, it's more about this human ex physical human experience abundance abundance in experience for you so it's because it's destined it's your destined path to use your magic to bridge the world between the spirit world and the third dimensional world I love her to explain what that is in creating the woodwives you have two of wands reverse again two of wands is the card of action of the card of exploration so <clears throat> i think this just sums up um, the channel message of like you being in your headspace a lot and you're being guided to take solid actions to ground your vision into reality
This card also tells me that you don't have to carry all the burden. You don't have to carry all the burden on your back. Sometimes it's best just to leave things be and just enjoy. You, know, you don't have to prove anything in order to feel qualified. I feel that has to do with, if you look at these two cards together, it's like, what do you have to show? What do you have to show for yourself? How can you prove your qualification? So I hope this channel message from your Akashic Records help you gain some clarity on how you can manifest your dream life to ground yourself. Make sure to check out the other channel video on abundance. I'll link it down below. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel for more content like this. Other than that, I'll talk to you soon.